Hi, Paolo here. You may have heard that Salesforce is coming out with a new Lightning user interface. This is an article that I found that is supposed to take us through some of the news around these changes. I'll put a link to this article on the description of this video, but I wanted to go through this article with you in the video and we'll talk about some of the changes that they're making. I'll share some of my opinions and then hopefully you'll do the same in the comments of this video. So this is all about the enhancement lightning UI um, that Salesforce is bringing out. So they're saying here that they have already started to give us a little bit of information about this new interface in the release patch notes. I haven't personally seen it, um, but there's just been so much in the release patch notes that I guess it might've been easy to miss. So let's go through this and find out exactly what it is that they're changing. Okay, so they're establishing their reasons for improving the Lightning user interface, which I think it's a good thing. And then they just go on about how, uh, what an interface actually is, uh, which is fine, so we'll skip that bit. And then they actually give us the first look at what some of these record pages are going to look like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom in here. So let's take a closer look at this. In this picture, we're looking at an opportunity record. Um, I'm gonna try and deduce this picture as best as I can. Obviously, keep in mind everything that I say here is purely my opinion. Um, I don't know exactly what the end result is going to be. I'm not sure if anybody knows at this point. Um, but here in this picture, we are looking at, seems to be like sales cloud. So if we start on the left-hand side, we have this, this sort of um, column here, this blue tab um, that goes all the way on the left-hand side of the page. These seems to be how we select our different clouds. I believe that first icon is sales cloud and, and the heart is service cloud and then commerce cloud. And then I would assume that perhaps these three dots here will then take you to the app launcher. Um, I guess that that might be a safe guess. I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out. But then after that, uh, if we start looking on the top side of the page, we have our tabs. This is clearly just a uh, sales console. So not quite sure how the service console uh, is going to look like at the moment. But this bit is pretty much the same. The global search seems to be a little bit simpler, which I love. They kept it very minimal. I really like this new approach. Um, then on the right-hand side, this seems to be quite similar as well. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. Let's get to the real changes. So if we start looking at the actual record page, this is really different. On the left-hand side, we have an about section, kind of a record component. Um, details component section here. This is just what seems to be like it's just going to capture all of your fields. It's looking a lot more in line with the lightning approach, I think. Uh, there's a much more friendlier approach to this new interface. I kind of like it. I have to be honest, I'm kind of digging it. I, I think this is going to be pretty cool. Um, in the center of the page, we have our path with a guidance for success, which is great. This looks really clean. The font looks nice. It, it looks user-friendly. I think they've definitely narrowed that down. I'm really, really hyped to get hands-on with this. Unfortunately, at the moment, I haven't been able to uh, yet, despite my efforts on Twitter. Um, I haven't got hands-on yet, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, I like how they kind of rounded all the buttons. So if we look at the quick actions on the top right-hand side of the page, everything's kind of rounded now. It's really neat. It looks really nice, even though they have like four of the same labels, I guess it's just a demo. I guess it's just for sampling purposes. They just put labels on there, uh, which is fine. Um, so yeah, back to the center of the page, we have our path and guidance for success. Below that, we have our activities. And again, they're using that same button style, kind of round, it's kind of nice, user-friendly, I like it. Then below that, you have your actual emails and your activities. Um, we can't see too much. It would be nice if one of them was expanded so we can actually see what that looks like, but it seems pretty cool. Um, not much has changed here, um, except with just, it's now a bit more in line with the new font and the new style, so that's kind of cool. On the right-hand side though, we have our um, related components, and this is a massive thing. 
because as we know, related components is just everywhere in Salesforce. They're super useful. And so I'm keen to see whether this new UI brings new limitations to this uh, or not. If it's just a visual change and everything stays the same in the back end, or if because of the visual change, we now have to work within some new limitations of like what fields we can display and how many and stuff like that. But at the moment, it's looking pretty cool. The files really list as well. There isn't a file in there, so we can't really see, but it looks pretty cool. And then products, everything looks kind of rounded. There's a, there's a little bit more gray in the page. I'm not sure how compact layouts is gonna behave with this. Obviously, they can't show us everything in one go. Um, but I definitely have a lot of questions. I'd love to know how dynamic related lists are going to work with this and dynamic components as well, how the dynamic forms is going to cooperate with all of this. I'd like to know about the compact layouts. Um, I like to know what the hover detail page is going to look like when you hover over another uh, record, what that looks like. So I have some questions, but I'm going to be patient. I'm sure they're gonna share more information with us. All right, so let's keep going through this article. Um, so while the refresh visual style isn't broadly available yet, it'll be helpful for you to get some background on our approach to user interface design and how it may help your users work more efficiently. So that's really good. It's a shame that it's not available yet, but I would love to get hands on with this. So hopefully they do provide a way of doing that. So, um, they're essentially just kind of outlining some of the reasons for doing this, which I think it's great. They wanna make things more seamless, more responsive. The responsive one is a really interesting one because what they're talking about here is, uh, you know, a big issue within Lightning already. I've come across many, um, many use cases where Lightning doesn't feel very Lightning to me. Um, and so I wonder whether this has uh, any direct impact to that. Uh, according to, to this, it seems like it's suggesting that it would, but we'll have to see. Bringing these attributes together in the visual style reinforces our commitment to creating a trusted user experience. That's great. I think that's really cool that they say that um, and that they stand by that as well. It's equally important that we continue to build a trusted relationship with you, our customers, we learn from your insights about the usability of our products and we want to reflect your feedback in our user interface design. I think that's great. I wonder where they got all this feedback from. Um, it would be nice if they made that a little bit more public, but then again, I think they will have a lot more feedback to digest and then maybe this whole thing would have been delayed. So let's have a little bit of a closer look at how this works. So to understand how the enhanced UI design can help you reduce time on task and to be more productive, let's consider the benefits first. Okay, so what are the benefits? So before and after user interface design enhancements. So let's have a look. This is the before and after. Right, so the before and after, we have here the components that we are already familiar with. And then behind that, we have that little blue background, so iconic. We have this big banner over here, the compact layout, this one's empty. And then we just have all of the uh, um, record detail components here. Now, the new one does really make it feel like everything's more in line. I quite like that difference and this comparison is pretty cool as well. Okay, I like that. So, what else? Clear indicators of success and prioritization. Yeah, use of colors, spacing, icons, fair. That's fair. Performance and load times. Okay, here we go. Reducing distracting images and optimizing the CSS code are examples of ways we're maximizing compatibility across operating system and devices. These steps allow new efficiencies and greater predictability. Okay, interesting improved approachability and accessibility, making sure that our design adheres to web content accessibility guidelines, that's good. Accommodates users with a range of abilities and can adapt a range of neurodiversity needs is among our commitments. Okay, interesting, I love it. 
key design updates with artificial intelligence. Here we go. I knew I was going to see AI somewhere. With AI capabilities increasing at such a fast pace, we've had to think deeply about how to modify our visuals, visual style to reflect contemporary usability expectations our customers might have. Naturally, as technology gets more sophisticated, the design of interfaces needs to be simpler, less cluttered, and more intuitive. I agree. Completely, completely agree. So, circular motifs. Now, oh man, these rounded buttons are nice. I like it. I love the color shade when you when you hover over them and when you click on them. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. We were inspired by the design of a Salesforce cloud, which is crafted from six overlapping circles. So we use circular shapes and rounded edges to convey friendliness, smoothness, and welcoming feelings. I told you it was user-friendly. It just feels that way. That's the first impression that I got. I think they hit the nail on the head with this one. Improving icons. The progressive work to update icons helps to improve legibility at varying scales. It creates uniformity across our suite of apps and improves signal clarity. For example, whether a button is active or not. I think we really, really needed this. I can't tell you how many times I clicked on a button and I wasn't sure whether the click registered or not. And then I had to click again and then maybe it launched that thing twice or it was just annoying. Font sizing and weights, that's good. Methodical color use, this is interesting. The colors, the colors in the refresh visual style are derived from the Salesforce color system, which is what? Let's have a look at the Salesforce color system. Okay, the Salesforce color system unites a variety of solutions necessary for scale. Using single source color system provides opportunities to automate decisions and evolve them with flexibility. The numerical color systems. Mm. Contrast ratio compliance is really nice. This method also works across alternative hues. Uh, ah, okay, okay. Adjacent colors, adjacent colors influence perceivable contrast between two visual elements. Wow, there's a lot more to this than we see. Hover, active, focus, disabled, selected. Wow. So hover is number two. So the default is number one. When you hover it, it becomes number two. When it's active, it's number three. So you get this border here to let you know that it's active. Focus. No, sorry. So default is number one. It's just the light blue. Hover is number two. Active has the visual effect associated when you click on it. Focus is number three. Disabled is still the grayed out, so four, that makes sense. And then selected is number five. Wow. I love that they're sharing this. This is really cool. Okay, so let's talk about availability. When can we expect to see this? Because, God, I want to see this now. So availability for the Lightning UI enhancements will be new and existing instances starting on June 5th. Haven't seen it yet. New instance of Sales Cloud Professional Edition starting June 27th. New instance of Sales Cloud Enterprise starting July 25th. Oh boy, here we go. Well, I for one am super excited about this. I cannot wait to get hands on with this. And I am very interesting to hear what you think. So make sure you drop a comment down below and tell me your thoughts. On that, if you like this video, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Until next time.